Yeah, I mean, you all know Ron, unless you're brand new. And he, he has the best bio, so I'm going to read it. Because it's so good. I don't want the new people to miss out on this bio. So Ron is an author, speaker, life coach, and sales coach. And he is also a licensed spiritual practitioner that studied under Rav Shell here at the Center for Spiritual Living Cape Coral. However, is now based out of the Center for Spiritual Living, Sarasota. Ron's popular book, Getting Unstuck, The Nine Keys to Creating More Prosperity, Fulfillment, and Joy, that sounds like a good book that he might bring up today, is a practical self-coaching guide to help the reader live a more self-aware and empowered life. He and his book have been featured on numerous podcasts as well as AM and FM radio talk shows across the nation. He is the founder of Positive Momentum Coaching, a leader of the Southwest Florida Speakers Toastmasters Club, and a former member of our own center's leadership council. Ron's biggest love is his family, which comprises of his beautiful wife, Fonny, two amazing daughters, Nicole and Ashley, and three dogs and two cats. Oh, you left out the part about the Incredibles. There was something about the Incredibles in there before, his family. All right, let's give it up for Ron Frost. This is what you bring when you forget to make slides. <laughs> Dawn, thank you very much. And thank you, Melissa, for your leadership. And of course, Malika, for holding high watch. But really, give it up for the Big Love Band, right? Aren't they the perfect songs for the selection of the topic of playing with money, of abundance? And it is, uh, it's wonderful how that all comes together. Because I sit there sometimes, and I listen to lyrics that start to come up. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's another great idea. You know, stick to the speech. But no, but that sounds good. I think, yeah, I think I'd like to put that in there. So anyways, we're going to let this flow. And I, I first want to kind of ask, is how is everybody making out? How is everybody doing? Um, obviously, we had the major event that was just a couple of weeks ago. People, pretty much everybody got their power back on. Everybody's in safety and everything's... Yeah, let's celebrate that. You may wonder, like, you know, talking about, in the spiritual community, talking about money, and what, yet, in a time when we've had devastation, but now more than ever, now more than ever, this is such an important topic. Because in order for us, we can't always control the elements of life. You know, there, there are great storms can topple two traps. They can, they can take off rooftops. They can take down phone lines, interrupt power, but they can't break the heart of humanity, true? They really can't. They're, and part of, that, part of that is embodying the spirit of prosperity, knowing that we are here as divine beings, and there is this, 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 this sacred intermediary thing called money. It may not exist on other planets and other dimensions, but it does here. And in order for us to play within the system and to express our good and to live our life joyfully, it is important for us to be prosperous, to accept the abundance and to allow that. And so for talking about the subject, it's a very, very important subject for us to be able to truly enjoy our life and shine our, and shine our light into the world. So with that, there's about five elements that I like to talk about, especially when it comes to the playing with money. And they are the key things that I feel that helps us raise our vibration, helps us bring in awareness, helps us allow the consciousness of money for good. And they are, well, the first, the first one goes along with play. And it's Fun. Fun is one of my favorite words. You got to have fun. And that's one of the things we sometimes tighten up with money, do we? We got this stress around, I don't have enough to pay my bills. Or I've been hearing things, you know, from my childhood, money is the root of all evil, or it doesn't grow on trees, or, or maybe when we asked for it, we got told no. But we need to 
change that, and that's what playing with money is. We need to allow the flow. We allow the flow so we can grow. And in order to do that is to do something called fun. And you can just imagine this. You can just take, take out, right now, just take out imaginary money, dollar bills, $20 bills, $100 bills, feel that, okay? Now you can open your eyes now and turn to your partner next to you, and one be a giver and one be a receiver. One share the money, go ahead, Cassie, you can turn around to Colette and Scott, you can all share money. Share money, one giver, one receiver, and the receiver's got to say thank you and hold this, this imaginary money up to their heart. Right? We're just playing here. We're playing with money. All right? How did that feel? How, did it feel? How much did you get? Oh, I gave. Oh, you, you gave. How much did you get? $100. What? That's all? <laughs> Come on, Dawn. I, uh... I gave it more. <laughs> it, it, it is. You, you, you can't dam up a flow of a river, and that's the consciousness of prosperity. That's the consciousness of everything in life. So we got to feel good on both the receiving side as well as the giving side. And to be honest, totally honest, I have had trouble with the receiving side. How many else has, have been that way, right? I've always wanted to be the giver. But then sometimes, like when somebody's trying to pay a bill, you know, at dinner time or whatever, or at, or at a restaurant, but no, no, let me get it. You fight over that. Receive. Allow yourself to receive and joyfully receive. With fun, Fani and her friends, and I believe this is in, Indi, in, the, in the Indonesian culture. Many of you know my wife is from Indonesia. And I've seen this, I call this the Indonesian money game. And it goes like this. Her and four other friends, five of them, put $100 each into a kitty. And then they all put their names into a hat. So there's $500 in this kitty, and they draw one name. And that person wins $500. Well, essentially they win four because they put $100 in. And that person's responsibility is within several weeks or a month to throw a party. Now, they may not spend all $500. I don't even question that. Food, festivities, fun, and everybody comes back together again. And they all put another $100 bill in. You can see where I'm going with this. Because at first, if you stopped the game right there, there would be one winner and like, what, four losers. What's the energy when, you, when you're losing? It's not the same as when you're winning, right? When you're winning, it's exciting. Yay, I won. And then it's done five times. Each person, once their name is removed from that hat, they still have to contribute another $100 until the round is done. But their name is removed from the hat because they already won. Everybody wins, nobody loses. This is kind of like life. Or in technical business terms, we call this, on your profit and loss statement, break even. You come into life with you leave life, it's the experience in between that really, really matters. And yet we need the flow of prosperity. So having fun with money is an element that can relax, relax us and ease us, even though we may have stress, we may have, been, have brought this on from early childhood or within the human collective consciousness, because we're one divine, unique expression connected to the divine matrix of the universe. So as we raise our consciousness, we're contributing that out into the entire field of consciousness. To raise your vibration through the element of fun. The other one is abundant. It is abundant. There is an infinite supply of, of Good. There's an infinite supply of abundance. And God knows how much money there is, but it never seems to run out. Sure, we can hear on the news of poverty situations and people that are driving rich, you know, yachts. I guess you don't drive a yacht, you sail a yacht or whatever. But we know 
they may seem like what we call the imbalance of money, but you can literally, literally find money everywhere. You can literally make money out of anything. True? When we sit here in a lack consciousness, whether it's, I mean, look at how many jobs that are available now. Look at how many people are using YouTube and TikTok and different ways of just making money. Finish this sentence for me. One man's trash is another man's... I know Don's probably saying, well, what about women, right? We make trash too, but I think us men are probably more responsible for trash. <laughs> but the truth is, you can make money out of anything. And when I really opened up to this and had an aha moment was years ago when I was a salesperson, I worked at a company in Rockville, Maryland. How many people are familiar with Rockville, Maryland? And we would have a sales meeting every Monday morning. It was the way to get us started. And we would dress up in our suits, and we would come in there, and all the salespeople would sit in the conference room, and we'd talk about our sales and about our goals and get ourselves all charged up. And you had to look. You had to dress up, and you had to look like that salesperson, even if you didn't necessarily have a lot of sales. You kind of had to look the part. And one particular day, after I was walking out of that building, I realized the sky was ready to kind of like open up and, and rain. Uh, quite often there was thunder showers in a certain part of the day, but it was like this, this was one, going to be one of those real killers. And as I walked around to the back of the building where I parked my minivan, I know you have to look the part, but I also had to carry supplies and equipment that I was selling, so I had a minivan. I noticed this person coming around the other side of a dumpster, getting ready to jump on his bike in the middle of what was going to soon become this ferocious rainstorm. And my thought was like, I need to help this person. You're probably thinking, well, Ron, he's coming out from behind a dumpster. <laughs> you don't know what he's doing from behind that dumpster. And anyways, I offered to give him a ride and put his bicycle in the back of my van. And he had this big like black leaf bag, trash bag. We threw that in the back. His name is Marco. He got to know his name. And he gave me his address where we had to go. And it was down Rockville Pike, and it was probably around 10 minutes to get there. But it didn't take 10 minutes to get there on that day. We start driving down Rockville Pike, and Marco's like, do you mind if we stop here? <laughs> it was Michael's art supply store. And I'm like, I picked up an artist. No. Let's drive around back to the dumpster. One man's trash. He jumped into that dumpster. Of course, here I am dressed up as a salesperson, thinking like a cop's going to come by, and here's a kid in a T-shirt jumping in and out of dumpsters, and I'm standing there like in the middle of the rain. And he brought like these brushes that were packaged. They were just full, I mean, they were expensive. Canvases and tubes of paint, everything was packaged. And then we went to the next spot. And this took forever to get to where we were going to go. Toys are us. You won't believe what they throw out in their dumpster. And my van was full of all this stuff. And we were driving, and again, I'm thinking, I'm a salesman, there's a sales process, you go out to do prospecting, lead generation. But no, he just jumps into dumpsters. And our last stop was a dollar store, and he didn't go to the dumpster, he walked through the front door, and he came out with cash. And I witnessed something that regardless of what our conditions are in life, creativity is the blessing that allows us to see beyond what is in front of us and to know that we can create money out of practically nothing. Kind of sounds like a Dire Straits song, but you know what I mean. We can make money out of pr pretty much nothing. And that's what he did. And so to be able to come from that abundant mindset and to know that regardless of where we are in our life, there is a way 
there is a way. And actually, he bought me, he bought me lunch. <laughs> we go into a pizza place, and he's like, oh, there were a couple of slices. And he goes up to a guy, he goes, those have been under the heat lamp for a while. They look old. And somehow he was able to get two free pieces of this pizza <laughs> that I sat down with him and had. I tried to get him a job in our warehouse, and he didn't agree with, you know, direct deposit and Social Security and taxes being taken out, but it, it, it worked for him to do the dumpster thing. So to each his own. The other thing, the other principle is, we hear this all the time, prosperity is an inner game. Prosperity is an inner game. True? As you believe, so it is done unto so then it's not only a belief, but it's also our behaviors, because our behaviors come from our beliefs. Which is the other famous quote, do unto others as you... Yeah. This is kind of like, there's a, such a thing as what we, you would call money karma. You know, it's like the person that, that doesn't leave a tip, but is always complaining about not getting a promotion at work. What goes around comes around. And this is, this is really one of those things when, when we start to share and we start to embrace and we start to know, just like we did in that game, the imaginary money game, we need to receive. We can't dam up the receiving side, and we need to give. And the giving side is just as important. And no matter where you are, we, we hear about time, talent, and treasure. There's ways to be able to always give. And it's through the expression of giving that expansion happens. And if you can give in line with your purpose and your passion, if there's a purpose and passion within you to do something, and that's that spark of life, well, the universe is there to create the abundance, the supply, to funnel it through, to make you do what you're here to do. Catherine is stepping up to become a life coach, and she is saying yes to that. And that's really the spirit of the divine that's speaking through her because she knows that's, her, that's what she's here to do. And so the universe makes that happen. Years ago, well, some of you maybe have met my, my father-in-law. He has sat in these chairs. He's no longer here. He's back in Indonesia. Uh, but years ago, he, he did come a number of times. Fani's mom and Fani's dad came here. But he used to work at a company in Jakarta, Indonesia, and he was in what we call a managerial role. And he had one employee that was below him that he had in his department. He was in purchasing, and they had to bring in all these supplies because they provided all the tooling and the equipment for the excavation of oil and natural gas to the oil and natural gas companies. This is a pretty big company. And so anyways, Amanto had this wonderful job. And what this company did was called profit sharing. So once a year, they would give money to the managers. If you were at the manager's pay grade or above, you partook within what's called profit sharing. But Amanto decided he wanted to split his paycheck. And this became a problem in the family. And people were like, You've got a wife, you've got four kids. He's by himself. He's a young man. And, but every time, every year, every bonus, 50-50. That's how he did that. And if you've ever met my, my father-in-law, you would know why. So he comes to the United States, I think in 2002, 2003. He lives with us in Maryland for a while. We come down here, we start a sign and graphics business. He becomes my employee. He's actually was one of the, he's very mechanically inclined. He helped me build the signs, he helped me install the signs, and everything was going great, company was going up, things were expanding, and suddenly 2008 come along and things shifted a little bit, and of course it affected our business as well. And it got, finally got to a point where between my mother-in-law and my father-in-law, they're kind of making a decision that, you know what, I think we're going to go back home. I think we're going to go back home. Now, here he is older, close to, very close to retirement age. And sometimes that's the mind saying, I can't get a job because, you know, nobody wants me. I'm too old. 
Have we ever had that thought? I think I had that thought at 12, and I still have that thought today. <laughs> but the, the truth is, and at that time in Jakarta, things were even tougher, tougher economy, tougher. So for three, four months, applying for jobs, not getting any opportunity, what happens? Fear starts to overcome you. And then one day, he happens to run into this exact same young man who bought the company who actually bought the company, this is a true story, who actually bought the company and at that moment gave Amanto a job and a company car. Now, the way, the, the way the universe works, it's not always going to be linear, right? It's like if I give you money and I expect something returned, that's called conditional, right? The how is not up to us. The how is up to the divine. And it can come through any resource, anything imagined or unimagined. It can come through people, places, things, experiences. It can come through what's called compassion. It can come through love. It can come through so many different ways. So as we give, it is not the controlling aspect to say it's got to be negotiated this particular way. But in his world, that's exactly the way it happened. But it becomes the inside game. And it's knowing that as you believe and as you do, not just the be belief, but as you act. That's the experience. How do you feel around the word I just wrote? That's the feeling, the feeling of joy, the feeling of excitement, the feeling, because here's the thing. When it comes to what you are, who you are, in this time that we are in, this now time, would not be here if we didn't have financial support, the lights to be on, to be able to facilitate this, to be able to have everything, the, 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 the food, the fun, the fellowship, everything. But even more than that, the sharing of spiritual truth, the sharing of science of mind, which can help so many people when they hear a message, change your thoughts, change your life. Do you feel empowered by that? Wouldn't you feel great that what you give financially actually expands that into the universe? So tithing, and here's the thing, Mary Morsey calls an experiment. How many people have ever taken the Prosperity Plus class? Okay. That's a lot of hands, too. And thank you for doing that. Thank you for expressing through that, through that way. Experiment. What, what does it sound like when you hear the word experiment? Is that the same as you must do this? No. Experiment. Let's see, how, let's see what works. Let's try this. You know, I, I'm, I'm listening to Mary Morrissey, and I'm listening to Laws of Prosperity, and I, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Here's the thing. It's an energy game, and it's an emotional energy game. If giving 10%, you start to feel a resistance, you start to have worries and fears, like I'm not going to be able to make ends meet, back it off. One of the biggest things is we don't want to condition ourselves to start to have resistance and fear around a subject matter that we're really trying to play with, we're trying to have fun with. So experiment with it and take baby steps and up the game and allow life to flow through you and journal and be observant to the good and the grace that happens in your life. Because as anybody that has ever taken that class, have you, have you had experiences where you actually had more abundance coming through? Absolutely. Yes, these are, these are the, the divine synchronicities of the expression of prosperity, of money, of growth that comes through the moment we start to give, the moment we start to channel the energy of divine currency. Happy. Can everybody smile at me? Can you feel happy? Can you feel joyful? 
what does money do? It is an intermediary thing to buy something because the belief in having that thing is going to make us more. Whether it does or it doesn't, the truth is, if we are to be a vibrational match to joy and to happiness, and I would even throw gratitude in there, because what happens when somebody gives you something? What do you typically say? Thank you. So if you're in the spirit and the energy and the vibration of happiness and gratitude, the universe matches up the manifestation with that vibration. As Wayne Dyer says, there is no way to happiness. Happiness is the way. If we live joyfully, even though it's difficult at times when we feel our bank account is low or we feel that the opportunity just didn't happen yet, but if we live joyfully in the expectation of good, we know in, that we become a vibrational match because if we close down and if we start to go into fear and we start to anchor that, then we, we cut off the flow, just like that game of giving and receiving of imaginary money. We need to be playful with it because it's really about our faith. You've heard it's not fake it till you make it. It's faith it till you make it. It's really about faith, isn't it? Everything that we do, everything that we practice, and everything that we become in this lifetime is through the experience of the prosperity and the divine connection that can come in so many unimaginable ways, more than money. As Don had shared when we were praying in, money is a tool. Yes, it is, but it can come in so many fantastic ways. It can come through the expression of the, the artist, the singer, the accountant, the, the person that is doing what you do, doing what you love to do, your expression. But at the same time, not being restrictive to the allowance of the true abundance of the divine sense of currency, of money, and to be able to actually have the attitude to play with it.